bag. It is April the Wolf Ranch Girl, and it is Tuesday. We have had three snow days in a row. Um, so we go hopefully back to school tomorrow and um, instead of doing a self-care Sunday, I'm doing self-care Tuesday. So um, I've got my hair in my little bun with some overnight conditioner. Um, and then I have been feeling a little bit of pressure behind my ears. So I've already applied um, tea tree because that's a part of my skincare routine, but I am going to apply lavender normally i would just do the neat oil or just straight but since i'm going to be also applying oregano um, and this is a hot oil you don't want to apply that alone so i'm just going to use my lavender roller which already has fractionated coconut oil in it and i'm going to apply those to the outsides of my ears and down my neck and hopefully that will take care of whatever is happening. Sometimes I just get pressure from um, the weather and there have definitely been some weather changes happening. So just do that, show you guys how easy this is. Um, I literally did not believe this when one of my friends told me about it. I've always had ear problems since I was two weeks old. I've always had um, ear infections and sore ears and the last ear infection that I had I don't know my eardrums did not bust but they must have been awfully close um, because ever since then like I can't even be outside and have cold air blowing in my ears um, because it just hurts them so anyway you can rub that on the outside of your ear like this and never inside the ear canal and then that will start working here pretty soon. Okay, but that is not the point of the video today. So we're getting ready to start Frugal February, which I will explain in the next video, but I wanted to prep that by talking to you guys about budgeting and making a bill paying schedule. So budgeting, I know you're probably tired of hearing people say it, but budgeting is like your single greatest money management tool because it literally organizes the money that you have coming in and the money that you have going out and if you do it right then it is going to keep you from having all of your overdrafts and everything like that so early in my financial journey um i went through the financial peace university with Dave Ramsey and that really taught me the foundation of the things that I wanted to know. But you can know how to do something and just not have the muscle to be able to do it. So you really have to build the muscle. So um, any kind of financial management is 20% head knowledge and 80% behavior. It's the same with eating. It's the same with working out. It's the same with any of those things. You know what you're supposed to do. It's just the doing it. And then also, don't let the start stop you. So um, a couple of years back, before we paid off our large amount of debt, um, I just we just got behind with tracking our transactions and tracking our transactions, and that turned into overdraft fees. And then you think you're ahead of it, and then you forget about this subscription, or you forget about this, you know, and it really put us in a living paycheck to paycheck situation, which is extremely uncomfortable. If you've ever been there, you're constantly worried about whether or not you're going to have a car breakdown or a tire go flat or if the kids are going to get sick or if you're going to have to, um, you know, have some sort of medical or dental emergency that takes place because you don't have those backup funds. So I knew that I needed to start a budget, um, but I just felt overwhelmed. Um, so this is me telling you guys that you can do it. It might hurt just a little bit as far as emotionally, but actually doing the budget is super easy. There are some extremely um, hard to understand, intricate, uh, difficult budgets out there that just have far too many categories. And if you've never done this before, it can be really intimidating. So I'm gonna try and make it as easy as possible. Now I have done a budget um, creation video using Google Sheets, um, so a self-calculating 
uh, budget and I'll link that somewhere up above. Um, but this time I'm just going to do it on paper. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so if you search on YouTube, there are going to be a lot of different ways that people do this. Okay. So, um, some people have a budget where they keep track of the income coming in and then their bills that are going out. And then they have a separate kind of checklist for the dates that those are due. Uh, whenever their bills are due or some people write it in their calendar whenever their bills are due I don't do mine like that I base our budget and our uh, bill pay tracker I guess you want to call it or checklist um, off of our pays okay so I have mine set up in a Google sheet and I print it out at the beginning of every month and I glue it to the dashboard page inside my Erin Condren Life Planner, okay? So I have my planner here, this is the month, and then you open this, and this is our household budget. And we're actually gonna do this budget on paper. So I'm gonna switch the camera around, we're gonna start with a blank sheet of paper, and I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to do this. Okay, so I just have an Erin Condren notebook. You can have any kind of notebook that you want. It is completely blank page, and we're just going to start this right from scratch. So I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is just create a couple of columns here. Okay, so the first column is just going to be our income. All right. And then the next column is going to be date number one, and then date number two, and then our totals. Okay. So then here, underneath income, you would just number. Now, the reason that I'm doing this date number one and date number two is because my husband and I get paid twice a month. So, for instance, um, this month is January, and so we would be paid on the 12th and the 26th, okay? So, you would put those dates there, and then you would put your income streams. So, if it is a household budget, then you might do um, person one, person two, and then if you have however many income streams that you want to include. So um, for our case, it would be me and then it would be my husband. And then um, if I wanted to include any other kinds of income streams, like a side hustle of, or any anything like that, then I could. I choose not to do that in my budgets because I don't know what that is going to be for each month. So that's why I have a separate account that I put that money in from those side hustles. You may not do that. You may know how much your side hustle is gonna bring in and feel free to um, list that. So um, when I am teaching my students how to do this, that's one of the questions that we ask is what do you have to include in your budget? You only have to include whatever income that you want to use in your budget. So for instance, if my paycheck is $1,700, but I only want to put $1,500 of that into my budget and that $1,700 is set aside for me or it goes into savings or it goes into a special sinking fund or anything like that, then that's all I have to include in my budget. Um, so that's what we're going to look at here, okay? So we're going to assume that person one and person two are going to um, contribute an equal amount into the budget. So let's just say that that is $1,400 per pay each, okay? So person one is gonna take $1,400 and put it in on the 12th, and person two is gonna take $1,400 and put it in on the 12th, okay? <clears throat> and since um, we are on a fixed income, we're both on salaries, we know that that's the amount that we're gonna be able to put in. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that out for the month as well, so the second pay date. Now, if you have a um, variable income and so you're not sure from time to time or from pay to pay what you're going to make then the easiest thing to do is look back for the last three months as long as the amount of time that you work 
is generally the same, meaning that you don't work one hour one week and 35 hours the next week. If you've got a generally you work 15 to 20 hours a week or generally you work 40 hours a week, uh, but you get paid hourly, then you can go back the last three to five pays and average that out or use your lowest pay in that amount of time. So look back at your last three to five pays and use the lowest amount of pay that you received and that is what you base your budget on. So budgeting for sure, um, number wise, is just a little bit easier when you do have a steady income, but it can be done on a variable income as well. You just have to kind of go with the lowest amount um, that you've received. And then if you make anything above and beyond that, then that's great. And this is a really good way for you to live within your means as well. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look over here at the totals. And if you guys wanted to make this look like a table, um, which that's kind of how my brain works anyway, then you can get out a little ruler, you know, and you can make your little lines here so that it does kind of look like a table. So I know that um, per person, we're going to have $1,400 per person per pay. So that means that um, 2800 is going to be the monthly contribution from person one and 2800 is going to be the monthly contribution for person two. Okay. So then the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bring that total income down. So just like if you were doing a math problem, you're going to want to know how much money you're going to have per pay to play with. And that's going to be $2,800 per pay. Okay. And so, okay. So now we are going to know that for the month, our total income altogether that we're going to be budgeting for is going to be $5,600. Okay. So that is the monthly total. So here's the total for pay period number one. Here's the total for pay period number two. And then this is the total for the month. Okay. All right. So if you were being, um, if you're doing an accounting, then you would just put a single line here because this is where we're going to start our expenses. Okay. All right. So we know that we're dealing with $2,800. Now what I do out to this side, this is how I make it the payment tracker as well. And I just gotta make sure you guys can see this. So out to the side, out here, okay? I just make a due date column, all right? So I'm gonna just assume that we're gonna use this whole page. I'm going to make a due date column. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and extend these other columns as well. Uh, you'll just have to forgive me. Not everything is going to be super duper straight because I'm not writing straight. Okay. My paper is kind of cockeyed here. Okay. All right. So now we're going to start listing out our expenses. All right. So for the sake of categorization, I'm just going to go ahead and um, use my highlighter and say, okay, this was income. And now we're going to move into expenses. Okay. So for the expenses, you might have mortgage or rent. So I'm just going to put down um, mortgage. Okay. And um, we pay our mortgage two times a month. So we break it up. So instead of making one giant payment, um, we just break it up and pay half on paycheck one and half on paycheck two. That actually helps us to hit the interest um, twice as often throughout the year and then we end up making an additional payment 
through the year. And then I have rounded that up. Um, so our mortgage is actually $760, but I round that up to $800. And then um, as time and money allows, I might add money onto that as well. So I know that I'm gonna be paying $400 a month or uh, $400 per pay to our mortgage. So that's going to be a total of $800 per month. And this is due on the first of every month. So that's where I put my little checklist. Okay. So I'm keeping track of when I'm paying my bills by the pay date. So on the 12th, I know that I'm going to pay $400 to my mortgage on the 26th. I know that I'm gonna pay the other $400 to my mortgage, so that $800 is gonna be paid prior to the first of the next month, okay? So um, something else that you might have is if you have a car payment, we don't, praise the Lord, um, but what about insurance, okay? So we have insurance, and the insurance is $434 a month, and it is due on the 19th. Okay, so I want to pay that ahead of time. So I get paid on the 12th and I get paid on the 26th. So if it's due on the 19th, then if I paid on the 26th, it's going to be late. So I know that I need to put that on the 12th. So that's going to be um, $434. Okay. And then um, cell phone is due on the 11th. Or let me see. Nope, that one is due on the 12th. Sorry about that. So I'm just gonna put cell phone and that is $285. <clears throat> and um, notice that on the insurance, I didn't put anything on the 26th because I'm not paying it on the 26th. So my total would be 300 or 434. Okay, and then the same thing for the cell phone. Okay, um, and then um, internet, that is due on the 10th, and that is $69. Okay, so you see how this just kind of goes down now, um, and you just keep track of what you're doing. So I would have a calculator off to the side and I usually use my phone, but I'm using it. I'm using my phone right now, excuse me, to record the video. So that's not really going to work out because, you know, I'm using it. So I would just have a calculator and you'd be um, just calculating down so that you know how much money that you have left at the end of all of your expenses. So you would have 2,800 minus 400 minus 434 minus 285 minus 69. And you just keep track of how much money that you have as you're going through and planning to pay your bills. Okay, so let's go ahead and move over to the next one. So my husband and I both have life insurance. Um, and that comes out on the 18th of each month. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and then um, the next thing is um, entertainment. So it's going to be, we have Hulu and we have the Hulu like plus Disney, that, that whole thing there. And unfortunately, that's gone up $20 in the last two years. So I'm, I might have to look at doing something different. But um, that is actually due on the 5th. So I can pay that on the 26th and it will be um, paid ahead of time. So that will go into our next column. Okay. And then we also have YMCA membership, and that is $65. And that is also, that is due on um, the first. So just like the house payment, I'm gonna put it on the 26th so it is paid ahead of time. And then you can just leave spots open. Um, if you wanted to, or if you have some additional expenses. So these are all fixed expenses 
that I know are going to come out of our account or that I have to pay every month. So if you have any kind of medical bills, um, one thing that I do like to do ahead of time, and this is in my um, fixed expenses, is I like to um, preload Amazon and PayPal. So um, a budget is a spending plan. Let me see if I can back out on this just a little bit. Okay, nope, that was too far. Okay, so I hate saying the word budget because a lot of people feel like they're just in prison. As soon as you tell them that they need to make a budget or um, that people that have good money habits make budgets, they feel like they're being restricted. And what this actually is, is a plan to keep you out of debt, to give you money, to give you freedom. So you know how much money you have coming in, you know how much money you have to pay, and then you start thinking about the things that you want to do, okay? So for instance, I like to shop. I love to shop for my house. I love to shop for my friends. I love to shop for my family. And if I'm not careful about that, then it will get out of hand and it will cause problems in our budget. Okay, so what I like to do is instead of taking um, money and leaving it in my checking account so that I can have it in case I want to go shopping, what I do is I preload or front load two avenues of payment. It's almost like creating your own prepaid credit card. So I know that a good portion of the things that I purchase are from Amazon. And then I also know that I like to use PayPal rather than putting in my debit card a whole bunch of times online. So what I will do is I will budget to add money to my Amazon account and add money to my PayPal account and I just let it sit there. So if I come across something like for Mother's Day while I'm on um Pinterest or while I'm on Etsy or something like that or if my mom or my mother-in-law says that they'd like to have something I've already got money sitting there I can use it for those things or I can you know um, use my other account if I want to it's fine but this I have found is very helpful in shopping because if I have money there already I don't have to worry about remembering to write it out of my checking account register or anything like that I just have the money to put into my Amazon account, put into PayPal, okay? So what I like to do is, depending on what month that I'm in, how often I get paid, I might put fifty to $100 in each of those um, accounts. So in this case, we're gonna do $100 to Amazon and $100 to PayPal. So I know you know, after the 26th, I'm going to have $100 added to whatever balance I had on Amazon um, and $100 added to whatever balance I had on PayPal. That way it's ready to go in case I need to do something. Um, the next, so this is like fun money. Okay. So I know that I like to shop. I'm not telling myself that I can't do it, but I'm giving myself limits. Okay. And we all need boundaries you know, to keep ourselves safe. Um, so then the next things that I need to look at are my variable expenses. So those are things that can change from time to time. So um, that might be a power bill. Um, that might be my water bill. Okay, um, that might be fuel for the vehicles. Um, and then groceries. Okay, so these kind of things um, change from month to month, but I can give myself a budget for them. So I can look back at my previous year in my budget and say, okay, I spent this much in January. Um, or I can say last month I spent this month much in January and um, I need to go ahead and budget for that as well. So my power bill is due on the um, 25th, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put that under the 26th there, and I'm just gonna say, 
that my power bill for January last year I think was about 250. We now do have solar, so hopefully that will give us some sort of a cushion. So I'm just gonna estimate that I'm gonna have about $200 worth of um, power that I'm gonna have to pay for. Our water bill is generally between 50 and $60. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, say that that is gonna be 55. So I'm just going to split the difference and that is due on the 10th. So I'm going to pay that on the 26th so that it will be ahead of the game there. Okay, for fuel, we actually have two vehicles that we have to plan for fuel for and the Expedition takes a little bit more than the Dodge. So I usually plan for $120 for the Expedition and um, $80 for the RAM, so that's $200. And so that's going to be a total of $400 per month. And I'm putting them on both pay periods because I'm going to need to put gas in both vehicles for both pay periods. Now, luckily, we live pretty close to our jobs. And right now, we don't have a lot of traveling to do. This amount will go up once we get into baseball season um, because our youngest son is in travel ball. And we do have uh, quite a bit of traveling that, that goes on. So this amount will go up when we hit March. And that's another nice thing about budgeting is I can look back at last year and say, okay, I was spending about this much in March, so that's what I need to start looking for. And then for groceries, this does go up and down. And with the price of groceries right now, um, I know everything is super ridiculous, but what you can do and what is wonderful is you can go online and do most of your shopping. So even if you don't like doing the pick grocery pickup, you can go ahead and put everything into your cart online so that you know how much you're going to spend or round about how much you're going to spend if you stick to your list. Um, another thing that helps with that is meal planning. If you can go through your pantry, your freezer, your refrigerator, and kind of make um, meals with the things that you already have, that's going to help you to not waste money by utilizing items that you've already bought, but it's also going to help you to be able to plan for the items that you need. And then I love grocery pickup, and luckily enough, we have a Walmart and we have a Kroger that both do grocery pickup. And then now we also have an Aldi in town that does grocery pickup. So that is very, very helpful. And at least for me, um, it allows me to kind of know how much I'm going to spend or know around how, about how much I'm going to spend so that I can plan. And then it also allows me to not be going up and down the aisles and picking up all of those extra things. So I really, really like um, grocery pickup as a tool and I use it almost um, every time that I have to go to the store. Okay, so for groceries and food, I usually um, budget about $200 a month. Now you guys, we, during the spring and summer, have a garden and we have started preserving a lot of our own food. So, and raising um, our own chickens and our own cows um, and uh, a pig every year, every two years. So we do have a good portion of our own food uh, that we have raised and harvested and we have here so that really helps to offset the amount of money that I have to spend at the grocery store um, and then also with vegetables learning how to can and learning how to preserve your own food not only is it incredibly more nutritious for you because it doesn't have all of the chemicals but it really helps with the food bill so I generally budget about $200 um, for groceries. Okay, so in this category, that's gonna take us down to about, so seven, six, five, four, three, to thir about 1,300, and then the same over here. We're gonna be right at about 1,300. <clears throat> okay, so that's gonna put us at just over 1,000. 
So this is why I really like um, the Excel spreadsheet one that I do here because I have it set up to where it auto calculates. So every time I put in a figure, it automatically tells me how much I have left. Um, okay, so the next things um, that you would want to consider are um, just things like other. Um, do you have any birthdays? Do you have any gifts that you ha would need to um, set money aside for? Are you saving for vacation? Are you, like we live in the country, so we have to um, put money back for propane. So we have a propane envelope, which is a sinking fund, and we um, try to put $100 per pay into that envelope. So we know that we're putting $200 a month away for propane and then twice a year we fill the propane tank. So this would be a sinking fund. When you're just um, saving for something over time. Vacation is also a sinking fund. I'm not sure where we're going on vacation. Um, but we try and put a couple hundred dollars away for that. Okay, and then the rest of the money will go into savings. Okay. Um, okay. So I just double checked all of my numbers. So at the end of all of your expenses, what I generally do is go ahead and total up all of my expenses. So for paycheck number one, I have $2,032 worth of expenses. For paycheck number two, I have $1,706 worth of expenses. Um, so that leaves me with a remaining of $768 after all of my expenses and then $1,094 after all of my expenses. Now with that amount of money, what I can do is I can put that all in savings. I can increase the amount of money that I'm putting towards vacation. Um, I can set money aside for anything else that I have to do. So just for the sake of um, this video, I'm just going to go ahead and put half in the emergency fund and half in general savings. So, so your emergency fund is money that you should put away in case of emergencies. Ideally, if you are somebody that is still in school, you probably want to have $500 set aside in an emergency fund, maybe a thousand um, for adults um, you may want to have one to three months of money sitting uh, worth of expenses sitting in an emergency fund that way if something happened and you got laid off or god forbid anything like 2020 happened again you would at least have several months worth of expenses put away so um, this is 768 divided by 2 is going to be 384 Okay, so I'm going to put 384 in each the emergency and savings fund. And then this is going to be 547. So then um, <clears throat> I know that I am ending with zero money. Now, does that mean that I have zero money? No, I just put, you know, um, $1,800 into savings accounts. So I have money, but what I have done essentially is I've taken all of the money that is coming in from my income and I've given it a job. So at the end of that pay period, every piece or cent that comes in should have a job. That job might be just going and sitting in an envelope or sitting in a bank account someplace um, as an emergency fund or a savings account, but it has been given a job. That way it just doesn't poof into thin air. And that is really all there is to creating a budget, you guys. So let me zoom out. A little bit and then zoom back in so that you can see the whole thing here 
okay? So again, this budget is based on a, a um, bi-weekly pay scale. If you get paid weekly, you would do exactly the same thing, except instead of having just two pay periods, you would have four pay periods, okay? Do you have to have the totals down the side? No, you don't have to have the totals down the side. But if you split your bills like I do, then that's handy so that I know that the total amount that I'm paying over those two pay periods is equal to or greater than that required payment amount, okay? Um, and any of those can be split if I wanted to. I could split the insurance um, bill, but I don't need to. So uh, it's just easier to pay it all at once. Okay, so um, I really like this format because it allows me to see everything that we're paying. It allows me to see the um, dates that we're paying them on. It allows me to see what I'm spending total for the month and then also allows me to add my due dates in so that I know that I'm going to be paying things ahead of time on my bills. And then I keep it in my planner. So when I get paid, all I have to do is go down and check each of these off, and I know that I've paid everything on time. Um, so that's all there is to it. Okay, so literally the three things that I needed to be able to do this budget was a piece of paper, a pencil, and a calculator. And that is all I needed. Now obviously, if you have not done one of these um, in the past, you're going to have to gather up your bills so that you can find out how much you actually owe and when it is due. Um, but once you've done that, then it's really not a big deal to put everything in order. And this is just one piece of paper. You can completely reutilize the format every single month if you're a paper person and you like doing it, then just get any kind of notebook, okay? So um, I have a notebook here, and if you're doing it every month, you would just need 12 pieces of paper, okay? Six pieces of paper if you do it front and back. Um, it does take, give yourself a little bit of time, it does take um, two to four months, around three months to really kind of get in the groove of this. And if your bank account is messed up, meaning that you haven't been tracking your transactions, which I think that's going to be the, one of the next videos in February. If um, this is all well and good, the budget is all well and good, everything looks super awesome on paper, but if you don't use it, then it's you've just wasted your time. Even if it was super simple to do, but you're not going to use it, it's just going to be a waste of your time because it's not going to work if you don't use it. Um, so utilizing the budget to organize everything, but then making sure if you only have $100 to be able to spend, don't spend $300, okay? Um, it's taken us a long time. These, these are not all of our actual figures. Um, these are made up numbers, but they are generally realistic. Um, but I used to be at a point where I didn't have one dollar to be able to put into savings but utilizing a budget like this has shown me where i was spending things where i could cut back and how i can organize and now i am able to put money in savings i am able to invest in retirement um, in um, roth iras and um, other types of investments so it takes time. So give yourself a little bit of grace, but don't let the start stop you. Like it's going to hurt a little bit when you have to be like, okay, I have five credit cards that I need to pay off. Okay. You have five credit cards that you need to pay off. So what? Get them paid off. This is the first step in being able to do this. Know the money that you have coming in, know the money that you have to have coming out and then be able to make a plan for how to get out from under those bills that you don't need to have anymore. Um, so the next thing that you need to do is gain control of your bank accounts. So that's going to be um, an upcoming video. And uh, yeah, just come back. It might be a rough one, but it'll absolutely be worth it once you get a handle on things. And once you um, feel that security of having control of your finances and not always 
having to be in that financial panic mode, it makes just such a huge difference. Um, so anyway, this has gone on long enough. I hope that this was useful to you. I hope that this is helpful to you and you find value in it and um, that I can be a part of you finding your financial freedom and your um, self-control and your uh, power within because being able to be financially secure gives such a feeling of peace. Um, it's really hard to explain, but once you get there, you never want to go back. So I really hope that this is helpful. If it was, then please go ahead and give it a like, go ahead and subscribe, share with anybody that you think might find value. Um, and then leave me a comment. Maybe there's a different way for you to do it. And then I will post, um, the electronic or the auto calculating, budget using Google Sheets. And then if I need to, I can read through that video as well. So you guys let me know. So I am going to get out of here and get ready for school tomorrow, but you guys have a great night and I will see you later. Hey everybody, it is April. It's a few days later and I just wanted to hop back in and talk to you about the um, lavender and the oregano. So um, I applied that to my ears for about Man, the lighting is terrible in here. Oh, hmm, that's better. Um, for about three days and ended up being fine. The weather is still crazy here, but I didn't have to go to the doctor. I didn't end up with an ear infection or anything like that. So yay, but just checking in. So I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you next time.